The next um, point is to make it a habit. So once you've decided to finally start, uh, the next thing is to do so regularly. So a common mistake that's done is that you have you have your money, you start to invest, then you forget all about it. So it tends to become like a one-time, big-time thing, which we don't want happening to just now and even in just a few amounts, as long as as long as it's done frequently, it's done regularly, at least, and you'll be surprised. Uh, how much you've managed to already save or set aside in like a year's time. Later, we'll be talking to you about how um, you are, you're able to do so now in the digital age where everything is online. And fourth is to keep your long-term goals in check. So these um, goes hand in hand with the, what I've mentioned earlier, that when you have your SMART goals, at least there's something that's specific, they're measurable, they're attainable, they're realistic, and of course, time-bound. So whenever, when you have um, look back and you're also able to just um, see uh, how far you are or how much more do you need, and it would give you that push that you need also. Um, next slide, please. Okay, Sean, so this is something that I want to share with you that you have to beware when it comes to spending less than what observe. I'm sure most of us have also committed this mistake in the past. Is that once you get your income, you get your salary, you spend what you want. So now you know that there are so many sales online, just the recent 11-11 sale. Um, you see all your ads when you open your mobile phones or when you scroll through social media. So it's so easy to fall into that trap of just spending what you have. And then whatever is remaining, it's what you plan to set aside if some things do remain. So, diba? Um, so why not just trying out this tip? So it's a very practical tip that I'd want to also impart because I've also started doing this. So once you get or once you've gotten your salary, say for the month uh, for the payroll cycle, why not um, set aside 20%? So 20% is what most financial advisors would also suggest to their clients. So setting aside at least 20% of what you earn for savings or investments. Um, I understand how much it's important to also be liquid, especially now in these trying times, you really need to have cash with you. But if you're able to set aside for a rainy day, at least 20% of what you earn, and then whatever is left, that's what you navigate around your expenses, you'd see that great shift when it comes to budgeting and managing your personal finances. So just a simple tweak in how you just manage your income upon receiving it. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so the next concept that I will be sharing with you, uh, I'm not sure if most of you are already familiar or if you've heard this in the past with uh, maybe other financial webinars that you've attended, but then this is the financial planning pyramid wherein um, it could serve as a guide in helping you know uh, where to put your money. So, of course, we'd want you to put your money where it belongs. Um, so, with this financial planning pyramid, it would show you the whole picture of achieving a secure and stable future. So, at the bottom, you will see your basic needs. So those are the needs that you will be um, having on a daily basis or anything that you are sure to spend in the next few weeks or months. So these should be put in a vehicle that's at least um, easy and convenient for you to um, manage checking account. Um, the sad part is majority of um, working Filipinos or majority of the labor 
workforce are still unbanked. So if you've already managed, because at least you know that you are secure, you have a place on where to park your, to park your cash um, whenever you need it. The next level, once you've had it, is that you already aim for wealth protection. So this would cover for unexpected incidents like job loss and critical illness. So a common mistake that especially young people commit is that uh, they think uh, insurance is not necessary since we're not at high risk anyway, we're young, we're healthy. But then if you think about it, um, this is actually the best time to get one since you're able to acquire it at a low cost. So just um, if you have a financial advisor or if you manage to read on it, then you could see which one would best um, fit on, be it a life insurance, maybe a property insurance, events in the future. Uh, once you already have both levels covered, then you can now proceed to um, looking at wealth accumulation. So this would talk about your mid to long term needs, anything that you won't be needing in the next 12 months anyway. So we're talking years now. Um, wealth accumulation would help you uh, or help you um, build your finance in the long term. So talking about, uh, we're talking about other life milestones that you'd be doing want to achieve in the future so say investing um the vehicles for this or the financial vehicles would be looking into um mutual funds or, or uitfs if you're not the type who'd like to um constantly check the market so uh, i person so i'd like to uh, portfolio managers trusted portfolio managers here at atram so i would uh, i'm invested in some mutual funds in uitfs uh, however for those who are familiar with the market or who'd like to get into stocks then that's also something that you could check out another form of wealth accumulation is real estate if some of you have already are already into this, then that's that's great. So now we're just thinking about really building that financial ability in the long term. And on the last level, at the peak of the pyramid, is your wealth transfer. So this would ensure the efficient transfer of wealth to the intended beneficiaries. So of course, you'd want to be able to have um, that wealth available for the generations to come, especially if you're older. Uh, um, this is what we call as estate planning. Maybe you're more than a lot of financial advisors would offer this service. And it's something that you could also consider um, in the future when you'd want to uh, think of a combination of different students. So uh, I'd like to point out, uh, as I've explained all of this, is that um, financial planning is it's a journey. So I don't expect everyone here to have all of this at a go. So oh, I, I have a go. I, I started as soon as I started working. I started building my wealth. I started, it, and, and luckily I'm... I'm here at a company where I'm able to learn all of these concepts as well. And it's something that you'd also want to impart with you guys. So just something to take into consideration when you plan out or when you start that, um, when you'd want to, when you've decided to have that uh, future or when you'd want to start planning your finances even better. So there's no, there's no right time anyway. So you can always start now with what you know now uh, so it's a process and that the basics of budgeting saving investing they're supposed to be applied all throughout at all levels of the journey that anyone can start at any
point. Uh, next slide, please. Sharing one, I'll check your finances on a daily. So now, uh, given that everything is digital, everything is online, and what you would most likely have access to on a daily basis is your mobile phone. So why not try exploring these uh, budgeting or money management apps, which are available on both iOS and Android for free. So we've managed to already look um, at what we think would best suit you. And uh, this is all up to you, whether you'd like to just try out or see what works best for given your given the lifestyle that you have or the spending uh, your spending capacity your spending lifestyle that you have so these are with optional upgrades also so that you can consider so we have good budget we have wallet by budget bakers uh, fortune city budget or money so which you could just um, download and explore which one would work best for you um right now i'll pass it on to bryce again um on next slide please we'll be talking more about investing in the digital age thank you very much nicole that was very insightful and mm -hmm. uh, i hope that uh, our viewers today uh, uh, learn the thing or Okay, hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Hello. Yes. Sorry. I think we're having um some technical difficulties. So See, mm -hmm. yeah. While waiting for Bryce uh, to reconnect, um, so that was a very interesting discussion uh, from the earlier part of um, Bryce's um, presentation to yours, Nicole's, right? And I think it's very apt now. You know, we're talking about going online when. Parang nga, no, everything is really online from shopping to groceries and then ngayon, actually parang even investing oh, yeah. right yep yep so um so while, while waiting for Bryce to log in we can probably you know address some of the questions that you know we we've, we've received na so there's one here um um so the question from Jomar is that is it advisable to start investing while in the process of clearing out debts? Um, he feels that one must have that financial freedom to even begin the process of investing. Is that uh, is that correct, Ba? Or what do you think about that, Nicole? Mm -hmm. That does that does really make uh, sense that we fall into debt. It's it's a result of not being able to manage your financial your finances well in place so um it is always advised that before proceeding to investing because sometimes like investing in these trying times it's seen as a luxury right uh so not not everyone can have that um can have that means to be able to set aside a money for the future to or to save or invest so of course, uh, priority is to obviously first clear out uh, debt that you have current that you have accumulated um, because of again uh, maybe wrong financial choices in the past. And then once you've done so, uh, there's nothing stopping you from moving on and from starting that again investment journey. So at least you're able to start in a clean slate. It's easier for you. Now to be able to uh, set the All right. Wow. So that's, that's great. Yeah, I see, I see Bryce now. Hi, Bryce. Um, Hi, Bryce. Good? It's all good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll go back to Bryce um, to continue his 